Hey guys, so I've done many videos on backing tracks and how to set them up and stuff like that. And one of the common questions that I get from you guys is how do I balance the audio? There's multiple ways that you can do that. There's obviously like compression and stuff like that to make sure that it's pretty equal. But there's two different things I wanna share with you guys just quickly to go over that. So the first one to use is a LUFS meter. So if you're not familiar with that, it's basically just a way to measure perceived loudness. Most of the time that's used for like, you know, like if you send it to Spotify, they have a specific LUFS requirement. And if it's above that, threshold, it'll just lower it to that level. But it, that can also be used for doing your backing tracks. So here's how I do it in Logic. Okay, so I've recently been working on a backing track for I Write Sins Not Tragedies. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to mute all of my click and cues. So you don't want those to go through because obviously I'm not measuring the click and the cues. I want everything that's going to the backing track channel. Now, again, this is in Logic. I'm gonna do this, you wanna do this after your limiter. It's gonna be the very last thing in your chain because you wanna know the actual level of this. But you're going to click and you're gonna scroll down to metering and it's loudness meter right here. So this is the LUFS meter. There's three different things right here. You have M, S, and I. I is the one that we wanna look at. So M stands for momentary, S stands for short term, and I stands for integrated. Momentary is going to tell you the exact loudness at that exact moment of the audio file. Short term will give you a little bit longer. I couldn't find the exact numbers, but it's something like measure basically an average of the last five to 10 seconds. Again, not exactly sure on the number. And then integrated will give you just everything that you've done since you've pushed the start button. So integrated is what we want to look at. It does have this fader right here, and this is really nice. You can place it to to where your goal is, and then it'll tell you if you cross above it. So for example, I don't like to personally go above negative 12, so I'm gonna set mine to negative 12 so that I can see if I am crossing the threshold. It doesn't really matter where you set it, it just matters that it's consistent between songs. So if your goal is negative 10 LUFs, you can set it there, just make sure everything else is at negative 10. If it's negative 16, that's fine. I've personally just settled on negative 12 is the loudest that I ever want a backing track to be. So I'm gonna set that there first. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose just part of the song and let it play and you'll see that's gonna pick up the signal. But it's not giving me any info because what I have to do is I have to click start. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit start and I'm gonna play a little bit of the song. So since I'm demoing these with cover songs, I am going to have to fast forward throughout this video for certain parts in order to avoid the YouTube algorithm from flagging my video. So when the audio is fast forwarding, it's just me trying to avoid getting in trouble with YouTube. <laughs> So that's where it ended up at. So it says it's at about negative 16. So my goal for that was negative 16 for parts that this part of the song, it is just the tracks and the vocals. It's all the orchestration and stuff like that and the vocals. And then everything comes in for the chorus. So this part doesn't need to be blaring loud because it's only tracks and vocals. It doesn't have to compete with the drums and guitars and bass and stuff like that. So that's actually at a really good level. I can and actually, I just made the mistake that I told myself to make sure that I let you guys know not to make that mistake. Anytime you make an adjustment, you have to hit the reset button. So if you do not hit reset, it'll remember everything with your old level settings, and it won't give you an accurate reading of your new level settings. So be sure to hit reset after every time that you've adjusted something. So if I thought it was too loud, actually, I'm just going to drop it down to like negative five. <laughs> Now you can see that it's settled on about negative 21. So again, I have this one already balanced out. It's at where I want it to be was negative 16. That's where I wanted it to be. You can do the same thing to check like, you know, the chorus right here, which is mostly just bass. I have very little negative 24 for the distortion guitar, but I mean, we can, I'll reset it. Hit play. So about negative 15 is about right. I want a tiny bit of a boost because it does need to pick up with a little bit with that bass. Now there's something I wanna show you though. So again, it doesn't exactly matter what my settings are. You just have to make sure it's consistent between yours. Something just to keep in mind, again, it's not gonna be exact, but again, just having goals of where to set it. So personally, I like somewhere between negative 16 and negative 14 for kind of mellow parts that are track oriented and then choruses and stuff like that. However, at the end of the song, the strings do need to be heard with the rest of the band because we're all playing here at the end of the song. So I'm going to reset this. I'm going to see where the level is here when you have the strings and the bass and everything going at the end. So that seems about right. So it's about negative 13, basically. 
My goal with those is about negative 13, somewhere between negative 14 and negative 12. That's my personal goal. It could go a little louder, could go a little less. I'm not going to obsess over getting it absolutely exact. You'll drive yourself nuts over that. That's just a general guideline that I try to meet. So that's good. So this one is at about negative 16. It jumps to about negative 15, which makes sense when the base comes in. And then here at the end, it's at about negative 13 because I do want the strings to be loud enough to kind of compete with the rest of the band because it's going to play over over the drums and stuff like that. So this seems to be leveled pretty well. Again, this is not the end all be all. This is just a general guideline that I use. Okay, so here's an older one that I did quite a while ago. This is for Cake by the Ocean. So this one I wanna choose again because it's gonna be, it's similar where the fact that there's a lot of tracks with this. This is more of a pop song. It's definitely got a much more compressed sound than the Panic at the Disco one. So again, I'm gonna mute the click and the cues and I'm gonna add the loudness meter in here. There's not gonna be a whole lot going on in the verses in this one. You know, it's mostly just the guitar, just me playing guitar, and then a little bit of the bass line and the, the claps right here. That I can kind of just use my ear for on how that sounds. So remember how I said not to obsess about it? Well, I'm not gonna obsess about this part, I'm just gonna trust my ear. I'm going to go to the chorus where there's a lot of tracks and I really wanna make sure that that is correct though. I'm not gonna obsess over every single part of the song, but the chorus of this song is very track heavy. And I'm going to hear how this sounds. I'm gonna put this back to negative 12. <laughs> Sorry, you do have to you do have to hit start in order to trigger that. Can you see how compressed it is? I mean, it's just like all the meters are just like right here. It's at negative 10 and a half. That's not bad. That really isn't bad. You know, it's a pop track, so it's going to have more tracks in here. So the guitars are a bit loud. So let me go ahead and turn those down. The backing vocals actually are a bit loud, but I'm just gonna turn just the vocals down a little bit, turn the guitar down. That there's this sweepy sound that can kind of get annoying. So I'm gonna turn that down as well. Let's go back to the beginning, reset. So I'm going to drop this down just a little bit as well. It was still just a tiny bit hot. Let's hear how this sounds. So it's at negative 11.5. This is what I'm saying. Don't go completely obsessed with saying, oh, I have to get it at exactly negative 12. Don't drive yourself absolutely crazy. To me, it's at negative 11.6. That is close enough to negative 12 for me. It's also gonna depend on the song as well. So if I'm doing like, you know, a Gin Blossom song, there's basically gonna be very little backing tracks in that song versus, you know, if I'm doing a pop song or something like that, which is gonna have a lot more tracks. So it's, you know, there's still a finesse to this. And it's not always gonna be perfect, but it's gonna help you get into that spot. The other thing that you can do is you can listen to, you know, the last track that you did, if it's a similar style or genre, and you'll be able to just A, B them next to each other and you'll be able to hear, oh, is this the same level or not? Vocals in, ready, go. Oh, well imagined. Another thing that has helped me out though is there's two different apps that I use. So I do this off of my iPad. I do backing tracks off my iPad. There's the app Multi Tracker and then there's the app Stage Tracks 3. I've reviewed both of them on the channel. The one that I've settled on is Stage Tracks 3, but both of them do this. So with this one, I have multi track outputs. So what I do is I'll have the stems for drums, bass, tracks and then click in cues, you can separate them how you want. That's just the way that I do it. And if I mixed something too quietly, I can actually just turn it up in the app. So I'll have the stem for the bass. So if the bass is too quiet, I can actually just turn that up. You can do this with a multi-track output, or you can still do this with the standard splitter cable, you know, where the tracks are panned hard left and the click and cues are panned hard right. If you don't know how to do that, watch my video here so you can figure out how to do that. But if I did that with just one file, if the bass was too loud, I can't turn it up without turning everything everything up. With this method, I have a way to turn it up just in the app. And this is how I do that. Okay, so this is Stage Tracks 3. This is the one that I've done this with. So I'm going to go to the I Write Sins Not Tragedies file that I've set up. I do have a whole video guide going over how to set this up. That's not really what this video is about. We still should be able to follow along with it. But check out my video if you want to find out more about how to set this up. But I'm going to go to Configure Multi-Track Playback. And what I've done is I've imported the drums, the bass, the tracks, the click, and the cues into here. And what I've done is I have drums panned to the left, bass panned to the left, and the tracks panned to the left. And then my click and cues are panned all the way to the right. So that's why I use the splitter cable. So just a splitter cable out of my iPad comes out TRS and it splits. Everything panned all the way to the left comes out this side and everything 
out of the right comes out this side. So obviously the right goes into my ears and for the band to listen to for clicking cues and then everything else goes to front of house in order to be mixed. Now the beauty of this is, so everything's still coming out left and right. So sometimes we'll play with drums. So I play in a band with my wife. We either perform as a two piece with drums and bass in the tracks, as a three piece with just bass in the tracks or as a four piece with none of them in the tracks and we just leave the tracks live. But let's say, you know, we're doing a show as a two piece and man, I mix those drums way too loud. Right here, I can just go into here and just turn it down if I need to. And actually the beauty of this app is while it's going, I have this button right here. So if the drums are way too loud, I can turn that down here. I'm gonna just reset that. And I also have an equalizer here. So say that there's no volume in the kick drum. I can choose, you know, kind of the frequency. So, you know, about, you know, 80 Hertz or something like that. And I wanna bump up the kick type of sound as well. Or if the cymbals were just blaring loud, I can cut that out right here, take out, you know, kind of like some 10K or something like that. Really cool. And this has been incredibly helpful for me just editing if I've made a mistake. I think I have, how many songs do I have in here? I have a total of 309 songs that I have made backing tracks for. I have so many songs in here. I'm going to make a mistake. I try to get it as even as possible, but when I do make a mistake, it's just going here and I can turn up or down my mistake if I have made a mistake. This app is phenomenal. I love this app. Again, Multitracker or Stage Tracks 3 both have the ability to do this. I've just settled on Stage Tracks 3 personally. So you can check out my videos on both of those by clicking the links on your screen now if you're interested in how to set this up. So that's been the most valuable because I found recently that even using like a Luffs meter and stuff like that or using my ear to trust that the bass isn't blaring. I remember that like we did a Hootie and the Blowfish song and the bass was blaring and then we did Baby Got Back by Sir Mix-a-Lot and you could barely hear the bass. So obviously I screwed up with that. But now what I did is I turned down the bass on the Hootie track in the multi-track in stage tracks and then I turned up the bass in the Sir Mix-a-Lot song. So that's the way that I've done that. Hopefully those two tips have helped you guys out. If this was what you were looking for, do me a favor, just hit the thumbs up button. It does a ton to help out the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how you are balancing your backing tracks. I'm definitely curious. So I do have a video going over my step-by-step -step guide for a backing track setup. I go into a lot of detail and my thoughts about how I do that. So if you're interested in checking out that video, you can click the link on your screen now. I do also have a video about 10 tips and tricks if you use backing tracks as well. So you can check out both of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages at Scott Yule Music on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.